Crappy Wartime Stories. Uh, this is going to be uh, chapter two, uh, and it's open to the public. Uh, I wasn't going to do any more open to the public, but I've been off uh, because of the death of my wife. I've been off a little bit, so I, I'm now I'm coming back on and just to let you know I'm back going again. You're going to have to go to my blog. I'll have it down below and uh, it'll tell more about, uh, like I say, the crappy wartime, Vietnam wartime stories. And, uh, but this is just to let you know I'm back uh, producing the series again. And, uh, let's see, if you've noticed by now, uh, most everything I do is uh, tactics. Uh, that makes me more unique than anything else that I've ever come across anyway. I mean, uh, I've noticed we, we can all get the same weapons. Um, uh, now, law enforcement, military, they think they get special. Uh, they think they can get special weapons, something that we don't have. And, and like I say, uh, and this is military and police throughout the world. And uh, they think they can take advantage of the people because of their special weapons. And that's why I focus on tactics. It's, and when I tell stories, it's always about the tactics. That's the main thing I'm trying to get across. Uh, because like I say, the tactics is what wins. It's not the weapons. I mean, everybody wants the fancy weapons and all this kind of stuff. But it's not weapons that win. It's the tactics that are used. And that doesn't matter if, it's, um, if you're out in the street and you're getting mugged or if it's a full uh, military um, uh, combat type situation, it's the tactics, uh, the down-to-earth tactics. That is what is going to win. Uh, most of the time, people don't even know what's going on. That's why uh, when you have the tactics, the proper tactics, you're going to win. If you don't have the proper tactics, you might go into a trap uh, false uh, thinking falsely that you're more superior than the other people. So uh, that's why I'm pressing tactics. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about, uh, I had a, a video out on the, the AR versus the AK and uh, boy we, we had a lot of fun with that. And so uh, I'm going to go into talk a little bit about my experience with the, the a AR and the AK uh, in Vietnam. And uh, one thing that I have noticed, uh, when people think, now it may be, I don't know what's going on in your world, but my world, I don't clean my weapon. Uh, I do the best I can under the conditions that I'm in. But most people think they're going to go to the range, shoot, go home, clean the weapon, this type of stuff. It doesn't work that way. Uh, if, we're, if, we're, if you're going to get into the really bad stuff. Uh, now, for me, in Vietnam, I was out in the bush for usually about 30 days at a time. And then we came back to the rear. Uh, usually we came back usually in the late afternoon. And then, uh, or middle of the late afternoon, and we get haircuts, uh, we get new clothes, we get a bath, we get uh, uh, first aid care, or medical care. Uh, we get ourselves taken care of once a month and we get hot, good hot food, all you can eat. I mean, they, they, that's, that's the only time, but we don't get it uh, for the rest of the month. And like I say, we get a bath, we get new uniforms, because like I say, our uniform by the time we come back is all, all chopped up, uh, blood all over it, either yours or somebody else's, uh, cuts from you know, running through the, the jungle and, and uh, wounds and all kinds of stuff. So uh, we get all this done and we usually head out you know, maybe two, three, four, five in the morning uh, the next day. Uh, we never associated with other military or other Marines or nothing like that. At the time, I really didn't understand what was going on. I never even thought about it. At the time, I thought all Marines in Vietnam were fighting. When I came back home, that's when I found out only 10% of the, of the Marines ever saw combat. And out of that 10% I saw combat, I guess I was one of the special 10% of the 10% that we saw quite a bit of combat. Now, uh, what I heard uh, was um, 
our unit uh, was uh, A Company, 1st Battalion, 4th Marines, um, 4th Marine Division. Uh, uh, we got in some of the most fights going on in the year of 1968. And uh, so when we did this, uh, we, uh, I'm gonna, well, let me tell you something here. Uh, I heard that we had an estimated uh, 7,000 kills. Okay, now later on in the video, I'm going to talk about how we did kills, how we figured out what the kills were. And, uh, but I say our 120, 125 of us, uh, we got credit for about 7,000 kills. Um, we got many uh, unit citations, and I'm going to talk about citations and medals. That's going to be talked about later on, too. But uh, what I'm trying to get across is, is uh, and I was there for 13 months. Uh, I got there before Christmas of 67 and I uh, left either late January or early February of uh, uh, 1968. Now the reason I'm telling you all this is I want you to know uh, I really did this stuff and um, uh, I know what I'm talking about. This isn't something that uh, I know a lot of experts talk about this stuff all the time, but uh, they don't apply what it is they do. Now, not only I applied at that time, I even apply it now. Like I say, the, the guns I carry, very few I clean. Most of the time, they're lint that's in them. And uh, uh, I say, I want a gun that's going to function no matter what, uh, because I say, if lint's going to stop it, you know, <laughs> it's not going to work for me because I'll use my gun to break out a window, uh, to break things, you know, maybe wood or what like that. If I have to get out a door, I'll use my gun to, as a hammer and, and break a hole in the door so I can get through. So, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm real, real violent with my, my weapons. Okay, now, uh, like I say, we're talking about the, the AR. Uh, my experience at that time, and I've heard people say, well, that was early on in the ARs. Okay, uh, whatever. You, you can say whatever you want to on it. But it's still plastic. It, the lightweight, it's great when it's lightweight. If you're going to carry these things around, it's a very, very good weapon for carrying. And uh, normally we would carry the, the M16 and, along with, I'd say, four to 600 uh, rounds. Uh, we carried lots of rounds. I, I had... Um, well, I said, I always told myself, I don't want to die, and I still have ammunition left. And if that's the case, uh, I don't want to run out of ammunition. So that's why, <laughs> that's why I carried so much ammunition. So, uh, and it's lightweight. It's a 223. It's a smaller round. It's lightweight. Um, you know, and the gun is light. So that's what made the, the M16 good. Um, I'll talk some more about it, but right offhand, uh, I would say that's probably the only good thing that I, I was aware of, stomping through the jungles, through uh, monsoon, uh, which is rain every day, all the time, uh, or uh, no, no rain, one or the other. Uh, so, uh, so dry conditions and wet, muddy uh, conditions. I will admit it wasn't cold. We never had any cold, uh, really cold conditions, but... Uh, but I say the, the lightweight was good. Okay, now other than that, you can't use the M16 to knock a hole in the door so you can get through. I wouldn't even break a window with it. Uh, if that was my only primary weapon, I'd be scared to break a, wep a window with it. But I wouldn't have 100% uh, um, uh, what do you say, confidence in the, the M AR after even breaking out a window. So a wooden door, forget it, you know, there's <laughs> no way I would even consider that as a weapon or as a rifle after breaking a wooden door. Okay, so that's that's one reason and, and when it's when it's plastic and it's lightweight like that. Another thing, now I've never been shot uh, by a bullet. I've never been stabbed by a knife. And, uh, uh, but I have been blown up. Many times, uh, uh, maybe five years after I came back from Vietnam, I still had shrapnel coming out of me. I still got some shrapnel in me. So, 
uh, getting blown up is something that's kind of hard to avoid in, a, in, a, in Vietnam, in, in that type of a combat situation. And uh, uh, my, my uh, AR get blown up too. Now, there's very few places on an AR where it can take a piece of shrapnel or a bullet uh, or getting banged by an, an AK or a machete. Uh, there's very few places on that weapon that can be hit and the weapon will still function. Uh, just, I mean, yeah, I understand it's really durable, hard plastic and stuff like that. I understand that. Hey, I like a Glock, so I don't have nothing against plastic. But I'm just, I'm talking about the AR in Vietnam. Okay, uh, it wouldn't take an explosion too good. Um, when I, uh, if there's, there's times you have to jump over things. Uh, it was difficult to throw your AR over anything. Or let's say, let's say you did. You, you smashed out a window, you threw your AR through it, and then you jumped through. Are you going to be able to pick up that AR and start in a full combat situation? I wouldn't, I wouldn't count on it. So uh, that's what I'm saying. When you, when you throw it over something, you don't know what's on the other side. It might be a mud hole. You don't know what it is you're throwing this thing in when you throw it over something and then you jump over to try to get it. So uh, that's another downfall of the AR uh, in Vietnam. Uh, I mean, it was really hard to let go of your weapon because once you let go of it, you knew your weapon was going to be in a bad situation. Okay. Um, the, it was shooting, now we had uh, the selective switch where we can do full auto or uh, semi-auto and later on they came out with a three shot burst. Now, the three shot burst might be a good thing, but I heard that, I've never shot one, but I heard the trigger pull is funny on them, so uh, I'm not quite sure if that would be a good thing or not. Uh, full auto, the only reason why we use full auto, we were scared shitless. And so when you start shooting, you're in your mind, you're thinking, if I can shoot, 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 you're not going to shoot back. That's what we're thinking in our mind. So that's why when you bring your gun up and you start shooting, you put it on full auto and you just, just keep putting them out. You're trying to keep everybody else from shooting back at you. And that is uh, why we use uh, full auto and that's why we went through so much ammunition. Also, we, one of the procedures was when uh, if we're on patrol, we're walking along, or even when we're in a, an area where we're, uh, we're, you know, we got bunkers and fences and stuff like that. Uh, when the first shot fires, normally, like we're on top of a, a hill, all the way around the hill, you've got, you know, fighting holes and, and they're ready to go. If one person shoots on one side, all the whole hill just starts shooting. Uh, like I say, you are really scared. So everybody just starts shooting and shooting and shooting. Most of the time it's in the dark, that's another reason. So, so here you start shooting. Now, once you start shooting, they get on the radio and they're telling them, uh, they already know where you're at, but you, you, you already told them before you settled in, and they're bringing a helicopter with more ammunition. So the idea is you better get rid of the ammunition you have now because they're bringing a whole buttload more coming in. So uh, that's, that's why when you start shooting, you just start, start going after. Back to the AR. When you're shooting like that, continuous shooting, continuous shooting. Now there's one thing the AR and the AK uh, have in common, and uh, that's why I teach. I teach uh, either one you have, you need four magazines completely loaded and ready to go. And the reason is, usually when you get done with four magazines, if you're in a, a, a fight where you need four magazines, by the time you get done using those up, I mean one after the other, your weapon will be so hot uh, you won't even hardly be able to hold it. So four magazines is really all you need. Now that's what we we only had. Well, we'd carry like maybe maybe six magazines, and we had bandoliers with stripper clips, with uh, like I say, you know, four hundred more rounds on that. So uh, that's why I'm saying. Uh, so you're not carrying the magazines, the bulk of the magazines. So, uh, but uh, you're gonna have the. Uh, so, like I say, you're going to have, let's see, what, uh, 120 rounds you're going to be able to shoot. And then, like I say, so when we start shooting, you got 120 rounds. Everybody around the hill is shooting all this out. Those guns are really burning hot. And uh, hopefully, is, we're not going to have any more fighting by then. 
but normally you don't really shoot that much unless you really you're really really scared when you're peeing and shitting in your pants that's when you you just continually shoot but like i say uh once they get really hot like that it really gets the the guns are real difficult to to uh operate and that's why uh, i have people uh, they argue with me. They're trying to talk about the accuracy on the AR is so much better than the AK. Um, well, where I was, and even now when I shoot, accuracy uh, isn't that much of a priority if I have to have a choice of accuracy and dependability. I mean, uh, I want the gun to function all the time, uh, uh, especially on something like what I just described, uh, you want the bullets out. You're really not that much concerned about accuracy. I'll let the snipers worry about the accuracy. And especially when there's, uh, uh, like I say, 125 vests around the top of a hill, and uh, there's um, maybe 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 of, of the North Vietnamese coming up. Um, I mean, you can just shoot into the crowd. You don't need to worry about the, you know, the accuracy part. Uh, I, I guarantee I never thought, oh, I'm gonna, I wanna do a headshot or, you know, I wanna, you know, shoot the weapon out of his hand. I never thought about that. In combat, I just never, never think about that. All I wanna do is stop the people from coming at me. So uh, I never think about accuracy. That's why you go right back to uh, when I talk about handguns, you want a gun that's gonna fit in your hand. You want it to be able to shoot exactly where you're pointing. And uh, with the a AR, it's the same thing. That's what, what's bad about them, and the AK, the same thing. That, that clip coming down makes it so you can't get down on the ground like you would with uh, the M1 or the, the M14. Uh, well, M14 still came down some too, but uh, the, those are better where you can get flat down on the ground. But I guarantee it when, when the shooting starts, uh, you're, tr you're trying to get your butt down as low as it's going to go. So. Now the, the AR, back to the AR again. Okay, uh, so uh, it's, not gonna, it's not gonna handle the, the fighting, the fighting itself, the combat itself, it, it won't. It does and when, like I said, there's 125 of us. So, you know, when my gun malfunctions, I can just get down there and start playing with it, try to get it going. And then the other uh, two guys with me, we had three men in a, in a fire team. The other two, they would keep firing. Uh, the, uh, maybe there might be two of us that are fixing our guns. That's not good. But it's not near as bad when all three of us have malfunctions. And when all three of us have malfunctions, that's when we're out with the shovels and uh, the uh, machetes and the K-bars. And no, the movies look good when you pull out the 45 and start shooting like that. That looks pretty good too. But uh, we never, I, I, I can't remember a time doing like that. I never used a 45 when, you know, when you got thousands of people coming up on you. 45 isn't going to do that much. Uh, so I don't remember doing that. Uh, I've never even remember seeing anybody doing that. Uh, now, uh, if that's your only weapon, you will. But uh, like the Marines always say, the, the handgun is only to get you to your rifle. And... Uh, so, but the AR, uh, like I say, is, is not going to, and then when you start getting hand to hand, when they start getting up close, and then they start swinging those uh, AKs and, and machetes and stuff like that, you know, you're, you're putting your, your AR up, you know, you, you just, all you got is a, is a stick, you know, but now by the time you get done with that, you're not going to block all this stuff and turn around and shoot. It's not going to happen. I guarantee they messed up your gun. It's going to be needing some maintenance. Uh, so, uh, and you're going to be doing it in the dark. You're going to be doing this maintenance in the dark. So, um, the AR, uh, and I'm sure even if even if you even if they made these ARs uh, improved on them, just one one step after another. Even if they did. Uh, still, um, would you give me your AR and let me not only drop it on the ground, but throw it on the ground? You wouldn't even let me do that. Okay. 
But in combat, you would do that. You're going to be throwing it on concrete. You're going to throw it on it, whatever. So, and you won't even let me do that. That's why I think it's funny. Uh, when I was training the SWAT team, or, well, before I was training the SWAT teams, um, they, the policemen would show me their nice fancy guns, you know, uh, Kimbers and, you know, all this kind of real fancy stuff. You know, here I am with my dorky Glock, you know, and uh, I was, I'll take my Glock and I'll, I'll throw that sucker clear across the parking lot. And uh, it, I don't, don't do it to all my Glocks. I got one Glock that I do it with. And I throw it all over, throw it over there and then bang, you know. And then I said, you know, I can go over there, pick up that weapon, and I'm ready for a gunfight. And then I'll stick my hand out and say, here, let me see your gun. And boy, they, you see them, they pull back. Boy, they want me to touch their weapon. <laughs> because like I say, there's no way they can do it. And even in a handgun, you know, like I say, I'd be banging out car windows and still have to use the gun. Can you do it with your fancy Kimber? I don't know. But I wouldn't put my life on it. And uh, that's we're right back to the same thing with the AR. This, what I'm talking about, is full combat out in the middle of the jungle and all this kind of stuff. And you're going to say, oh, well, I'm never going to be like that. Well, you may be absolutely right. One reason why I can say that is you don't even have the balls to come down here and spend some time with me in Guatemala. And if you did, you would be spending some time in the jungle with no, no means of maintenance for your weapon. But you stay in your own little sheltered world, you might be able to use your AR. And it's like I was telling someone else, okay, I do the three-man militias and a meet and greet team. And if I was on this meet and greet team and I'm out, out in front, ready to do what I have to do, talk business with my, my these uh, possible threats, I don't want you standing behind me as the other, with the other two, with the two that are going to be with me. I don't want you being back there behind me with an AR. It's not going to work. You better have an AK if you're going to be with me. And like I say, that's if we're, and if you think we're going to be staying in your little area, good. But once you leave your little area, you sure better have that AK. It'll be easier to clean. And that's why we used the enemies, uh, North Vietnamese AKs, uh, whenever we had a chance, we would use them. We'd keep our ARs, but we would use their weapons first and their ammunition and their weapons. So, um, uh, so when you hear me uh, getting down on ARs, uh, there's a just reason for it. And um, uh, I'm alive and uh, I don't give all that credit to the AR. I give it some of the credit, yes, but not all the credit. And uh, as I say, at the same time, it's put me in jeopardy. Uh, the good thing is, I have good tactics. Uh, and my tactics aren't surrounded by the weapon only. And that's why most people get screwed up, is their, their tactics are formed around that weapon. And when that weapon malfunctions, they're, they're screwed. Okay, I don't. I've got I've got many tactics that I can fall back on. And whatever weapon I have at the time is uh, the tactics that I work with it. So anyway, uh, that was the AR. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Uh, like I said, I've even had the newer ARs and uh, they didn't work either. One good example, uh, the, sear, the, the sear that catches the hammer, the pin that holds it, it broke. And I used to have all my rifles loaded. And what I did is I cleaned up my uh, AR, I stuck the magazine in, and then I you know, pulled the, the slide back. And when I let go, it kicked into full auto. I was lucky I only had the 20 round magazine in there. And it went like that, right over my roof. Punched all kinds of holes in my roof, my house. So, but, uh, uh, so that was the, the newer ones. So that's why when I tell people when they get the newer ones or any AR, uh, you make sure you get good quality all the way around. Don't, don't get any of the, the off the wall brand stuff like that because you're going to get uh, cheap pins just like what I had on that one. And there's going to be a malfunction and you don't, I don't, if you're coming up against me, I would rather you have an AR if I'm going up against 
uh, if I'm the one going towards you, it won't be with an AR. I have one, I still play with it, I have fun, I modify it, I play with it, do like the movies do. But uh, like I say, a uh, true combat weapon. Uh, but then again, I'm by myself. Now if you're part of a unit, really good. I know the military uses them and uh, uh, I'm sure they're plenty happy, but you see how they have them strapped. None of them are planning to let go of their weapon either. So, uh, and like I say, they're well organized, they're well together, they're staying together. Uh, they've got support. That's what makes the AR work. When you're on your own, you don't want the AR. And just like all your weapons, each primary weapon you have, you should have a case of ammunition, sealed case, and then have other ammunition that you play with. But you have a sealed case of ammo for uh, any one of your primary weapons. Okay, thank you. This is Mike, nostressmike.com.